Dirt is fun. And it's also everywhere, which means that at some point it's probably going to appear in your renders. That means you should probably know how to do it right. Right? Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of CGC Weekly here on the CG Cookie Blender Training YouTube channel. This week we're going to be taking a look at how we can create particulate dirt in Blender and how we can get really cool results even at a macro level. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. Now something that might pop into your mind immediately is why would I ever want to use particles to create dirt when I could just use a texture? I mean there's plenty of PBR ones available online and while you're not incorrect, the issue is, with textures, you can eventually get close enough to it that it just is a pile of pixels. So instead, we can utilize particles to create something that you can get insanely close to and still maintain detail. Anyway, let's hop into Blender and look at this in a more detailed scale. Alright, so as you can see here, I just have the default Blender file opened up in Blender, and we're just gonna get started with this. So I'll start off by just deleting everything in the scene because we won't be needing any of it. I'll press Shift A and add a plane, and this is going to serve as my ground plane. So I'm not going to modify this very much, but one thing I am going to do is add some surface displacement, right? When you get really close to dirt and look at it up close, I know everybody does that, you'll notice that there are a lot of ridges and contours and even clumps in it that we have to replicate. So in order to add this extra detail, I'll first press Tab to go into edit mode, I'll press W and select subdivide off the list. And we'll do this two or three times to get a good grid going. We don't want this to be too high poly, but something around this density should be just fine. Anyway, I'll press tab to exit out of edit mode here. I'll come over to our modifiers tab, select add modifier, add a displace modifier. And as you can see, our plane does move a little bit. We'll click new to add a new texture. And then we'll come over to the properties panel and select that, well, I guess not the properties panel, the texture properties by clicking that button. All right, anyway, we will, from this drop down here, select clouds as our noise texture, and we'll up the scale to something that just gives us a nice rolling gradient, kind of like that. We'll come back into our modifiers tab here, and we'll just drop the strength all the way down to like 0.2 maybe. Just something that adds very small surface deformations into our ground plane. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to add one more displacement modifier though. So we'll add that. We'll add another texture. And by the way, we should probably name these textures. We'll name the first texture, say, um, main. And we'll add, name the second one, secondary. Cool. All right, anyway, uh, now that we have secondary added, we'll come into the properties tab again, and you can see it automatically selected clouds for us. And this time we're gonna increase the scale, or sorry, decrease the scale but increase the density. And we'll come up to the colors tab here, add a color ramp, and drag the black value up a bit. That way we just kind of get these little peaks. And we'll drop the depth down maybe to a value of one. That way we kind of get specific peaks everywhere. And this is going to serve as kind of like clumping for our dirt particles, because in reality, dirt particles kind of clump together when they uh, land on a surface. So anyway, we're going to come back into our modifiers tab here and drop the strength down a lot, so we just get these kind of little bumps everywhere. And that's looking pretty good so far. Uh, I might actually want to increase the scale of this, or decrease the scale actually. Not that much, but something around there. And then we'll drop the strength down a little bit again. So it's just a tiny little bump. So something around 0.05. There we go. So now our plane looks kind of like this. We'll go ahead and enable smooth shading to make things look a little bit smoother. And this is a good start for our particulate dirt. So the next thing that we need to do is actually add a particle system onto the surface of this. So in order to add particles, we'll just come into the particles tab here, click new to add a particle system, and we'll name our particle settings just, uh, we'll name this dirt small because we're gonna have multiple settings for multiple different sizes of dirt. So anyway, We'll change this from a emitter type to a hair type, and we'll change the number, actually, you know what, we'll leave the number around one. We do, however, in the render options here, want to switch this from path to object. And right now there are no objects being emitted, obviously because we don't have any objects assigned. So we, we need to make some sort of procedural dirt clump that can 
be created here and be displaced and all that stuff depending on its location. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to my second render layer down here. I'm going to reset my cursor back to the center because I don't know why it's off. That's just pressing shift S and then selecting cursor to center. I'll press shift A and add an icosphere. And before I click off or move it or do anything, down here in this lower left menu, I'm going to drop the subdivisions down to one. That way we have a nice low poly icosphere. Now, if you don't have this menu down here, it's probably just hidden down at the bottom here. All you have to do is click this plus and it should pop up and then you can drop the subdivisions down to one. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and change the shading to smooth shading. That way we have a nice smooth icosphere, even though this, it shouldn't really be that smooth, but it doesn't matter. We're just using this for very small particles, so nobody will notice. We'll come into the modifiers tab, add a modifier, and we'll select from this list the displace modifier once again. We'll add a new texture. This time we'll call it dirt displace. And we'll enter the properties by clicking that little area over there. So now we'll change this to clouds once again, and we will change the size to something small, but not too small. If that makes any sense at all. And our goal is basically just to get an awkwardly shaped piece here. We might have to add one more piece of dirt or one more displacement modifier to kind of get some more shape to it. So we'll actually name this dirt displace underscore 01. We'll come back into our modifiers here, add another displace modifier, create a new material. We'll change this to displace 02. And actually, you know what, while we're at it, we should also change the texture coordinates from this from local to global on both of these. That way when we move our dirt particle around, it gets displaced in different ways. Now, I do think just by moving that around that our first displacement is a little bit too strong. So I'm gonna change the strength down to something around 0.5. Now, if we move it, you can see it's a little bit more understandable. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and edit our Dirt Displace O2 settings here. So it by default chooses clouds. We'll choose something different off the list this time. We'll use Veroni or Voronoi. I don't know why I said Veroni, Voronoi. Um, and we can just change the scale up to something that gives us a good approximation. Something around 0.65 looks good. That way we get multiple different dimensions of deformation. Perfect, so this is going to be our dirt particle that we're going to be cloning a lot. So I'm gonna come over to the object settings here and actually I'm going to name this dirt particle. So now if we come into our place with the dirt plane again here and select our plane, you can see all the particles are all the way up there. Um, we can come into the particle settings and where it says dupli or dupli object or duplicate object, we're going to select dirt particle. And by default, oh my goodness, we have a bunch of huge dirt particles. So in order to shrink them down, we just need to change the size value down quite a ways. I'm actually gonna go to like 0.005. The idea here is to get something really small, even smaller than that, 0.001. Eh, that might be too small, 0.002. There we go. All right. And then we're also going to crank the random size up to somewhere around 0.9. And this will give, give us just kind of a random scattering, I guess, of it um, when it comes to size. While we're at it, let's give these dirt particles a little bit of random scattering as well, because right now they look a little bit too evenly spaced out. So in order to kind of get them clumping more naturally, we'll check the advanced tab up top here and change this from jittered to random. That way we get some more chaotic um, results here. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I'm actually going to up the number of particles here to a fairly high amount, and you will notice it does get a little bit laggy. If your computer can't handle a certain amount, you can actually come down to the display area down here and choose a specific amount to display. In my case, I'm actually only going to display 10% of these particles. I'm going to change the number of particles up to something around 50,000. So right now, right now we're only seeing 10% of the particles, but if I change this up to say 100, you can see that we get a much denser coverage of these particles. I might even go higher all the way up to 100,000. The idea is with this to get a solid coverage of the entire base. And that is kind of what we're getting here. All right. I think this is good for our small dirt. Now, of course, as I said earlier, we don't really wanna be seeing all this, and as you can see, it's making my viewport quite laggy, actually completely unresponsive at the moment, so we'll come down to the display tab here and drop the display amount all the way down to 10%. That way our viewport 
is nice and snappy again. If you need to drop this even lower, feel free to. Sometimes 5% is actually a better idea for me. So we'll leave it there. All right, anyway, let's create another particle system. This time we're gonna call this dirt big, all right? And we're gonna basically do the same thing with dirt big that we did with dirt small, except we're just gonna have less particles. So we're gonna switch this over to be a hair emitter. Um, and then we're going to change the render type to an object. And we're gonna go ahead and create a big dirt particle. Now, in order to create a big dirt particle, all we're gonna do is add another icosphere, but this time we're gonna crank the subdivisions up to two. That way we have a little bit more geometry to work with. And since there won't be as many of these, we can deal with the slightly higher geometry. I'm gonna scooch this over a little bit because we don't want it being right next to our um, first dirt particle here. And we're going to add a displace modifier to this as well. So we'll choose displace. Oh, and while we're at it, let's switch over to smooth shading to make it nice and buttery smooth. All right, we'll create a new material and we'll call this Big Dirt Displace. All right, and we'll click on the properties here. We'll select the clouds texture. And we'll get just a scale that seems to be pretty good. Right about there seems good. No reason to really finesse this too much because it's gonna be pretty good no matter where you put it. We'll change the texture coordinates to global, change the strength to somewhere around 0.5. Uh, and actually, you know, we'll go 0.75 with this. We'll get a little bit higher there. All right, and then we'll add another displace modifier similar to how we did the other one. We'll call this Big Dirt Displace 2. Change the texture coordinates to global. Strength, we'll leave at 1 for now. We'll come back and tweak that later if we need to. We can change it the type from clouds to Voronoi. Uh, and then we'll just change the scale up to be like that. And maybe drop the strength down to 0.75 here as well. So now if we move this big dirt particle around, you can see that we do have it randomly generating just like that. Perfect, so now let's come back into our first layer here. We'll add uh, another particle, well, I guess we already have the particle system, so we'll just go ahead and change the dupli object to, we forgot to name it, let's rename it really quick. We'll call this big dirt, or dirt particle big, like that, there we go. All right, so we'll, come back into our particle settings here, and we'll select dirt particle big, and as we saw before, it is very big, so we'll scale it down, but we don't want it to be quite as small as the other ones this time. We'll set something, or set it to be like 0 .005, that's still too big, 0 .003. All right, there we go. That looks a little bit better. Um, in this one, we'll also check the advanced box and change the distribution to random. And another thing that we can do in order to randomize things a little bit more, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but a lot of these dirt particles are all oriented in the same exact direction. So in order to give these just a little bit more random rotation, we'll come down here into our uh, particle settings, check the box that says rotation, and we'll also drop it down. We'll change the initial orientation to normal tangent, and then we'll change the random value for both of these, up to max. That way we just get quite random distribution of those. And we'll do this for the first particle system as well. So we'll come into the rotation, check that, change it to normal tangent, and then drag both of the normal sliders all the way up to max. So now if we change this so we are displaying all 100,000 of our particles here, you can see that we get this really interesting combination of dirt particles. Now, if you want to, you can actually add more layers of dirt particles. Sometimes it's a good idea to add a medium size, but for the sake of this tutorial and because we don't need that much time, I'm just gonna leave it at big and small particles. But again, adding more particles and adding more variation in particles is a great way to add more variety. You know, while we're speaking of that, I just realized I also forgot to change the, uh, if we come over here to the second particle system, as I'm lagging to scroll through here, we forgot to change the random scale up on our other particles. So we'll change this up to somewhere around 0.9 as well. That way we do get some medium scaled particles, even though we don't have specifically medium scaled particles. And that made a lot of the particles smaller. So we'll actually change the scale up to 0.004. All right. So just like that, we have a pretty good dirt approximation. And right now we don't have any materials on this. Right now we just have pure particles and it doesn't look like anything. So in order to accommodate for that, I'm going to add some materials to our individual dirt particles. Now I'm going to change the display back down to a very low number because I don't want to have to deal with this. Oop. There we go. Okay, so now we have significantly less particles and we can actually switch into render view and kind of see them. Actually, I'll switch on an HDRI here 
All right, so anyway, I just got an HDRI loaded up and this is our plane right now. And as you can see, there's really not that much going on on it because we don't have any of those materials like I mentioned. So I'll switch out of rendered mode here and I'll come over to our second render layer and I'll select one of these particles and I'll come into the material property and add a new material. And we'll just call this material dirt particle. All right, we'll split our window like this, get rid of these extra menus by pressing T and we'll open up the node editor on the left and I'll get rid of this side panel by pressing N. All right, so we want our dirt to use the principled shader because the principled shader makes things look pretty. So we'll get rid of the diffuse shader here, press shift A, come down to shaders and add a principled BSDF shader. And we'll put that in right there and we'll connect the BSDF output to the surface output of our material. Now here's where things get a little bit cool. What we're going to be doing is creating a random color for each individual particle of dirt that we have in our ground plane scene. So in order to do that, I'm first going to add a color ramp. So it's under converter, color ramp, and we'll connect the color output to the base color input. I'll go ahead then and select a dirt-like color, something that's right around there. That might be a little bit too saturated and too dark, something right around there. And we'll do the same for the other side as well, selecting a slightly different dirt color. Usually dirt colors are a kind of darkish, orangish red. You have to play with it yourself, kind of get some results you like. And basically, I'm just going to add in a bunch of different color variations into this slider. Some of them are gonna be more saturated and darker, some will be less saturated and lighter. So you can see, I just have five different uh, color nodes on here. I guess that's what I call them, color nodes, color sliders, color inputs, I don't know, on our uh, color ramp slider here. So the next thing we need to do is use some sort of random assignment. And in order to do that, we'll use a geometry, or sorry, an object data node. So we'll press shift A, come to the input category and select object info. Then we'll just use the random output as the input or as the factor input for our color ramp. And we'll change the roughness to something maybe around 0.2. We'll see how that looks. Uh, everything else can be pretty much left the same. And we'll do the same thing for this particle, except we don't have to do it because we can just select the material like that. So if I press Shift Z now and look at these particles, you can actually see that just by default, these two particles are slightly different colors. The one on the right is actually slightly darker. But if we come over into our first render layer here, you can see that if we look at these particles, they do have some color variation, and this is exactly what we're aiming for. Now, it'll probably help if we add some more particles, but for now, this is pretty good. Anyway, the next thing I wanna do is add some roughness to the surface of these particles, um, but not through standard roughness. I wanna use a normal map instead. And in order to do that, I'll just add a noise texture to our scene, because we're just gonna do this procedurally. It's easier that way. And then we'll add a vector bump node. All right, we'll use the factor output as the height input for our bump node and use the normal output as the normal input for our principled BSDF. And by doing so, you can see that our dirt particles here start to get a little bit of roughness on them, or I guess displacement on them. Uh, we'll change the strength down to like 0.2 or 0.3 because we don't want it to be too terribly strong. And we'll change the detail up to five just for giggles. You won't ever notice that, but the last thing we need to do is actually apply this dirt particle material to our dirt plane. Now, sometimes I find it's actually useful to apply a dirt texture to the, the ground plane. That way you have that extra added realism. But in our case, since we have a procedural texture, it really doesn't matter. So I'll come down from our material drop down here and just select dirt particle. And you'll notice that it looks kind of like mud right now, but as we get these particles added in, it will look a lot less like mud. So anyway, I wanna go ahead and do a render of this up close to see how it looks. So do keep in mind that as this renders, it is actually utilizing all of the particles, right? Even though we had the display set to only 10%, that's only for the viewport. So here is our final result. And I don't know about you, but I think that looks pretty dang good. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode and this tip on how to create particulate dirt in Blender, and hopefully you'll be able to apply it in your renders at some point. If you guys did find this tutorial to be very helpful, be sure to leave a like down below and also hit that subscribe button right there. That way you get notified when we upload, uh, actually almost every day, but when CGC Weekly comes out because that's the best thing here on this channel. Totally unbiased, I promise. Again, thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next Thursday.